Formatting your code will help you improve so many things. You get better code maintainability, your code just looks better, and it's easier to read. So let's get into how to format your code like genius with Pidia, the, I would say, go-to standard for code formatting. And if you also want to know things like how do you use Prettier with Tailwind, then stick to the end of the video where I also explain how this is working. But let's get to the basics, let's get to the starting point. What is Prettier? Why should you use it? What is it exactly? Simply said, it's just a code formatter, nothing more. But what is a code formatter? Under the hood, Prettier is just taking your code and reprints it again with some rules that you can specify inside of the settings or inside of the config file. We will take a look at that. You can use Prettier for uh, a lot of file types. For example, JavaScript files, TypeScript, JSON, HTML, CSS, Markdown files, and so much more. Really, the list is like endless. You have pretty much every file type supported. Uh, things you, there that are not supported are like uh, .env files because I think the structure is clear and uh, there's nothing to form it for Prettier. So why should you use Prettier? There are some benefits of using Prettier. Benefit number one is time management. You, you are so much faster with Prettier because you can just specify, okay, format the code when I save or format the code when I leave the file, format the code when I do a specific shortcut. That's like, you don't have to form it yourself and this is saving time, of course. Because of the, because of the fact that you're saving time, you also write your code faster. You also help newcomers understand the project because if the style is consistent in every file, the newcomer has it way much easier to understand what's going on and also you have uh, a better understanding of what is going on. So the maintainability is better. The readability is better. It's easier to clean up existing code bases because you understand it more quickly and don't have to figure out the spaghetti code and what is going on here because it's like you specify the rules and you see the result of it. Now we have this term linter. So there's something like ESLint. What is now the difference between prettier or linters or code formatters and linters? Yeah, linters usually contain not only code quality rules, but also stylistic rules. So most stylistic rules get unnecessary when using prettier or even conflict with each other. Um, so using linters and tools like prettier for code formatting might conflict in some problems, which you don't want in your application because then you get like linting and, and prettier errors and you don't know what where it's coming from and you really need to secure that. Normally, if you download Prettier, Prettier handles that all so you don't need to handle it yourself. But if you want to use code formatting on both sides, like you like this one feature from ESLint and then you want to combine it with this one feature from Prettier, it can get kind of complex and you really need to do a whole of configuration. Uh, I will link you in the description down where this is a little bit better explained and where you can dive deep into it. Let's get over to the how to install Prettier. And you already see here's a plugin, Prettier Code Formatter. So this is in VS Code, but you don't need to use VS Code. Prettier is supported in a lot of, a lot of tools, like for example, WebStorm, Atom, Sublime, Visual Studio, <laughs> or for the crazy parts of viewers on this video, it's also supported in Vim, for example. So you don't need to stick with VS Code as I'm doing it here, but I will show you how to use it in VS Code and how to set it up in VS Code because I can't show it to you with every editor. That's just too much. You have pretty much two ways for that. One way is you use the Prettier plugin. As you can see here, this is just, I'm here on the left side on the extensions page. So you can install that. I already have it installed. You just type, tap install, and that's basically all for VS Code. I will show you how to set it up then. And the second way is, uh, let's say you have a project and you want to secure that the styles are not set it up for each one individually. So let's say we installed this Prettier plugin. Now we can head over into the settings and look for something like prettier. And now we have here extensions, prettier, 30. And these are all the prettier settings you can do. The problem with that is that this is just for your own. So let's say you work in a team and yeah, you have like seven members of the team and everybody has prettier installed, but just the plugin and are, is configuring it completely different. Let's say some want semicolons, some don't want semicolons, some want a print width of 100 and some want the print width of 80. And you get problems there because I'm formatting it. It looks like that. And now the next one is working on the same file and is formatting it and it looks different. And everybody is like conflicting with the style rules. And 
yeah, that's a problem. So if you really want to use it alone, the plugin is completely enough. You don't need to specify rules. But if you need to specify rules for, let's say, a whole team, then I would suggest you the way number two of setting it up. And this is with a NPM package. And that's also the way I want to show you here now. So we can head over into the console or in the terminal and type in something like that. NPM install minus minus save dev because this is just a dev dependency and then prettier. And this is installed in prettier. So added one package and you can see in the package.json now that we have prettier installed here now under the dev dependencies. And now we can specify our rules for the whole project. Actually, there are a couple of ways of doing this. I would suggest you to go with the prettier RC config file. And you can also use like a JS or I don't know if TS is supported, but I think JS, you know, so you can make a prettier rc.js file, I think. Uh, or you can specify a key in the um, package.json, package.json, I'm sorry. Um, but I think the prettier approach or the, the config prettier approach with JSON uh, structure is like the common one. So you type in something like dot prettier RC. You see it's already getting a nice icon. And here all we need is a JSON object. And here we can specify the options for styling or for code formatting in the whole project. So like if somebody is cloning that uh, from GitHub, they also get the prettier RC. And every style I right in here, or I specify here, is also saved in the GitHub and is also yeah, distributed to all local clients and everybody who's styling then is like using this Prettier RC even if the Prettier plugin is installed. So this is overriding the Prettier plugin rules you specify in your own VS Code settings, which is pretty what you want. Um, so yeah, what type of options do we have here? So Prettier has some options. And I will not show you every option because that are a lot. Um, I will just show you the options that are commonly used that I typically use. I want to show you the, the print width um, thing. And yeah, 80 is the standard value. So what is the print width? The print, the, that's a hard word. The print width is like the width where let's go into a normal file. Let's say we have an off button here. So the, the context doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter what, what, what this is doing now. It's just about what do we see? And the print width is like, how many characters do we want in one line until it is like getting over in the next line? So if we specify something like 20 here and we format that file. We see, okay, some things are wrapped now because the 20 is overwritten but some things are not wrapped. For example, this export default async function off button because it can't be wrapped. When, it, when I wrap something like this, I directly get an error. So things that can't be wrapped, for example, you see the CSS thing here, I can't wrap that, but all that can be wrapped will be wrapped with that. And if you wonder how, how Toby, how, how did you format that now? You actually need to specify when do you want to format things. For me, I want to format if I tap option F. So with command K and then S, you get into the, um, yeah, in the, into the key bindings and you can say format document, for example. And there I have option F, as you can see here. So, uh, this is a typical way that you can specify a hotkey. You can click and then it's formatting your document. And the second way is, let's say, head over in, into the settings and let's say format on save. So there's a setting format on save. And if I, yeah, if I activate that and I'm, let's do this back to 80, save that and go into this file. And I just type in command S now, you see it's directly formatted. So this is also a typical way of people who are doing this like that. But I, I don't really like this because I'm someone who's clicking command S or which is I'm, I'm somebody who, who's saving the file very oftenly. So that's gets annoying if like everything is shifting every two seconds. So yeah, I would suggest you to stick with a hotkey uh, or, or with a shortcut better said. And uh, like option F, another thing you have to specify in the settings so that it's working is that you need to specify the formatter that it's used. So you have the setting default formatter. So here you have all types of formatters that are coming from your extensions or that are normally installed with VS Code, for example. And you really need to specify prettier here. So if you installed the 
plugin or the extension. I think this is done normally. Maybe it's not. So uh, check it out if something is not working for you, if the default formatter is set to prettier. That's pretty important. But let's get into more options. So we know print width now. Another thing uh, is, for example, semi. So we can say, for example, semi false. I think we need a comma here. Let's say semi-false and semi-false is doing these semicolons that are not mandatory in JS or TS. Um, so if I type in option F now, you can see we get rid of all semicolons now. Next thing I want to show you is, let's say, yeah, that's a good suggestion. Thank you to Copilot, single quote. As you can see in the imports, now we're using the single quote thing. And if we go back or say single quote false, which is the standard thing, and format that one, then you see, ah, okay, it's head heading over to the double quotes again, like here and here and here in the imports. So that's the way you can specify that. So we can save it to true. What else do we have? We have the print width, we have the, we can also specify the tab width, for example. So two or four, or let's say eight, so we really see a difference. So if I save that, you see the tab width is the indenting uh, space to the left side. Like this is now eight. Uh, I would suggest you to not go with eight. It looks horrible. So do two or four that are the standard thing. I don't know. I think four is the standard thing, but a lot of people like two. And yeah, we can stick with the head here now for example purposes. So another thing that is not that commonly used, but uh, you can use it quite well is JSX single quotes. So as you know, JSX single quotes are like uh, every single quotes that are or every quotes that are used by the JSX. So the JSX in React, as you should remember, is the HTML code you uh, return from a function. So if you want different rules for that, then you can specify this also with the JSX single quote. And these really are the five things I use all the time, uh, I would say, when I set up big projects for a team. Another nice thing is we can do something like plugins. Oh, wow. Plugins, pretty a plugin swell. No, this is nothing we want. I'm a Next.js here, so we can type in something like Tailwind CSS. So Prettier plugin Tailwind CSS is a plugin for um, for Prettier. And this is used to also format things like this. So typically you just write them down and there's no, yeah, no, no order of things. It's not, it's not uh, sorted. It's just how you write them down. You don't want that. So you want to install the prettier plugin Tailwind CSS. So let's head over in the terminal and let's type in npm install minus D minus D is doing the, the dependency stuff. Prettier, prettier plugin Tailwind CSS. Okay. Prettier. We don't need prettier again because we also, uh, because, bleh, because we already have prettier. Uh, so we install the npm package prettier plugin Tailwind CSS. And this is installing this plugin. And now we wait a second and there it is. So if we have this like uh, here now, so prettier plugin Tailwind CSS, we can go into a document and we can just say something like, for example, let's take, I don't know, this flex thing. This has a good positioning, but let's do it here and let's do these things here anywhere and let's split them up and really messing this whole thing up. And let's look at the magic now. If I tap option F in three, two, one, and you see everything is jumping where it's supposed to be. So there, uh, the plugin is trying to get a, a logic inside of that. Like it should be flex item center. So it doesn't make sense if I say item center and flex at the end, because we first specify flex and then the item center. Yes, that's the way of doing it inside of the prettier RC file. But you can also, if you just want to use it for your own and not for a project, you can also do all these things inside of the settings as I showed you in the beginning. So if we head over to prettier, or we have the settings also here, you see print width or JS single quotes or bracket spacing is also a good thing or tab width I showed you, semicolon or single quotes, for example. So you really have also the option to choose it here. But if you have the prettier RC file, this gets overwritten by the prettier RC JSON file. So uh, because you don't want that everybody of your team is doing it differently and your code always looks different on every commit on the code base. So yeah, there are also more plugins than just this pretty RC or pretty plugin Tailwind CSS plugin I showed you here. Uh, I will link you in the description to a page where more plugins are um, 
yeah are presented most of them are for like languages that are not commonly uh, supported by Prettier or maybe for some extension of things uh, so if you if you miss something in Prettier uh, take a look at the at the Prettier plugin page I will link you down in the description and yeah maybe you can find a solution for that there if you want to learn more about uh, Tailwind CSS, my last video was actually about Tailwind CSS. Sadly, it just has 30 views. So if you want to take a look at this, I, I really talk about how Tailwind is working. And the main topic of the video is what is the common mistake of Tailwind people are doing every time. So if you want to know more about that, look into my last video. And yeah, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for staying with me until here and bye bye.